All right, guys, so today I have a case for you, and I think you guys will really like it, and we're going to use this case to go ahead and teach a topic. So while I'm preparing for residency, I thought it would be a good idea to use my education to go ahead and kind of attempt to teach. Um, let me know if you guys enjoy it, this kind of format, because I can continue to make more on a weekly basis. So here's the case. We have a 75-year-old male that comes to us um, to the internal medicine service, and he comes in originally complaining of fever, he complains of a cough, um, and he says he can't really breathe that well. So he actually comes to one of our colleagues, and they do some workup, and they realize that you know he actually just has a basic pneumonia. So they're treating him for pneumonia. They treat him with some antibiotics, and then you happen to be the lucky intern or resident or med student on call when a few days later the nurse calls you in the middle of the night or the middle of the day and says he has some really bad abdominal pain. So this is where we are, and apologies for any spelling issues um, in advance. But we have abdominal pain in this patient. So the question is, what do we do? You know, um, We have a patient with abdominal pain. What kind of things should you be thinking about as you're walking to go evaluate them? And so let's quickly just give you some insight into his abdominal pain. So you likely will not want to know, excuse me, you likely want to know where it's happening. So it's right in the middle epigastric of his belly. Um, you want to know if he has any other symptoms. He says, yes, I have nausea, vomiting. You want to know if the pain really goes anywhere. He says, not really. Um, and you also want to know things about, you know, fevers. And we're going to say, I'm going to change the color here for a second. We're going to say he doesn't have any fevers. Um, and he's not bleeding you know, in his stools, his bowel movements are okay. So really all we have is that he has middle pain and uh, some nausea vomiting. So what should be some of the next things you uh, would be considering in this patient? So, you know, other things you may be asking him and just kind of how bad is the pain? Does it just hurt? And he says, oh, it's 10 out of 10. Um, so it's a big deal. You know, it's the middle of the night, so you need to know, do you, is this serious or is this not? So let's, you know, let's talk a little bit more about other information we want to know, right? Where you are the kind of covering intern resident medical student, and this is a new patient to us. So we want to know some details, and so we're going to want to know their past medical history. And so when you ask the nurse, or you look at the chart, you realize he has hypertension. Um, you realize he has kind of all the common things. He has diabetes. Um, you realize that he uh, has coronary our disease, um, just lifestyle kind of issues um, that he has. And you want to know kind of is he on taking any medications? It says yes. I take a blood pressure medication. I take two actually. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about which ones they are. He takes a statin drug so it helps lower his cholesterol for his CAD. Um, sorry about that. And then he We'll say that's all the medication he takes. And then, you know, you want to know other things. Like, let's ask about his social history. What are his lifestyle choices? So he is a smoker, long-time smoker, uh, but he doesn't drink, so no alcohol use. I'm just going to say, I'm just going to say OH negative. Okay, so this is what we have, right? We have a 75-year-old with abdominal pain, pretty bad. He has a lot of lifestyle issue choices, takes some medications for, and he seems to be recovering from what he initially came with, but he has, looks like what seems to be a new problem. So you as a doctor, what do you want to do next? Um, and hopefully you are asking to want to learn more about the patient, their vitals, their physical exams. So let's talk about their physical exams. So I'm going to just put that here. I'm just going to say PEX. And, you know, you do basic heart, lungs, uh, abdomen. You check their vitals. So let me give you their vitals first. So his blood pressure is about 120, um, over 70. Uh, his heart rate is up. Um, he's about in the hundreds. And the rest of his vitals are fine. You look at his lungs. You look at his heart. They're doing okay. But when you look at his abdomen, right, that's what you're really – focused about. Um, it's just tender um, everywhere. So he has tenderness everywhere, um, but no rigidity. This is really the main finding right here. 
And then the other thing that you notice on his vitals is that his pulses. So his pulses, especially um, and towards his legs, are just diminished. They're just not as strong as the ones in his arms. So based off of what I just gave you, you know, looking at all of this, what would be kind of what we call your differential diagnosis? So what would be things that you'd be considering about? So again, just to paint the picture, you have an older man who has abdominal pain, who in the middle, some nausea vomiting is pretty severe. Um, his physical exam shows that it's pretty bad. And he has some weird thing going on with his pulses. Like, what should we be thinking about? So when I think about abdominal pain, first of all, I look at location. Location really can help you determine a lot of different things. So because it's in the middle of the stomach, there are certain things that we are more likely to think about than others. And if you go down at the bottom of this page, you'll see kind of a nice diagram to show you what type of things you should be thinking about depending on where somebody's pain is. So because it's in the middle, we're thinking about things like pancreatitis, Sorry about spelling, I don't really care. Um, what other things would be in the middle? So for example, if someone had like a peptic ulcer disease, um, somebody could have, let's see, what else would you expect to have? Um, he could have a ruptured ulcer. And then the main question that I love to kind of hit on, and this is what you want to think about as a doctor, is what could kill your patient? You know, as grim as that is, you want to know what's the most important thing you need to be considering in every patient with abdominal pain, chest pain, because you want to make sure you don't miss it. So what could kill our patient with middle abdominal pain who's older, who smokes, has history of hypertension, and you may be screaming at me uh, while watching this video, but it's a triple A. So this is an aortic aneurysm, okay, an abdominal aortic aneurysm. So this is kind of what we're going to be talking about because this is what this case teaches. So just to go ahead and be simple, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of erase what we kind of worked on. And then we're going to go ahead and teach about a triple A. Okay. So an aortic aneurysm or a triple A. So let's kind of quickly talk about what that means. So your aorta, for anyone foreign, is basically like your big trunk that supplies blood um, to your body. So it obviously blood comes from the heart and you're going to have blood that goes down to the lower extremities and then some that go up. And so this right here is going to be your aorta. It is kind of like your highway. So you're going to have uh, an aorta that's in your thorax, your chest, and obviously you're going to have one in your abdomen. So now when you go into your abdomen, you have a risk as for many different reasons of developing an aneurysm, which is essentially what I like to consider like a bubble or a pouching. So your wall, we're going to zoom in right here. We're going to zoom in and this is kind of what we're going to see when we're zooming in. So your wall, and here is the aorta wall, is made of several different layers, okay? Three different layers, in fact. And, again, you have blood going through it. Over time, what happens is that the wall gets weaker for many different reasons that we'll talk about. But it gets weaker specifically here around the lower abdomen. So that is why you can have a triple A. So a couple of reasons that you can have this are things like age, you know, just our heart and our vessels working against each other for so many years can cause this to weaken. You can have things like smoking. You know, smoking just doesn't work well with the vessels. And so you're likely going to damage these walls. And so it's going to lead it to be weaker. And that's going to lead the blood to kind of push the vessel outwards. You're going to have uh, some outpouching going on. And other things, sorry, this is all getting really dirty uh, and messy, um, high blood pressure. And other things as well include things like infections. So syphilis, uh, salmonella, other infections. And we're not going to touch on every single thing, but just know that anything that can really cause a weakness in your vessels can also be a cause for an aneurysm. So should we care? Like, this is a big deal or not? So yes, you should care because this is the 13th leading cause of death in the U.S., 
I really have to work on my placement here, apologies. And that's roughly about 9,000 deaths is the last stat that I saw on this. So it is a big deal. And it's also a big deal because it's pretty silent. So our patient, you know, came fine. We had no issues with the abdomen. And then suddenly, all of a sudden, we have something going on with a risk of an aneurysm. And the aneurysm is not the, the problem. The problem is you could rupture this wall. And your highway that supplies blood towards your lower extremities, your upper extremities, can essentially blow open. And that's going to lead blood to leak out and avoid having blood going into the other parts of the body. So you want to avoid what we call a ruptured AAA. Okay, so we talked about risk factors. You know, we talked about what we're trying to avoid. Obviously, it's very serious. So how do we kind of identify if our patient, this old man, is supposed to have it? So I'm going to go ahead and just take a second and let you think about what ways, if this patient was yours, what would you want to do? And if you said you would want to ultrasound this patient, then you are right. So ultrasound is super effective. Um, I'm not going to throw too many numbers out, but sensitivity is a big thing that you'll learn about in medicine if you haven't already. And it's basically the idea that if your patient does have the thing you're looking for, you know, how likely is the test going to be positive? Okay, so for uh, an ultrasound, it's about like 96 to 98 percent. So it's, it's a very good test to identify. If it's positive, you are likely going to have um, a triple A. And so, you know, if our patient had it, perfect. But again, remember, this happens to a lot of people uh, with these risk factors. And so because a AAA can lead to imminent death pretty quickly, we actually evaluate people anywhere from like 65 to 75 um, at least once uh, by just doing an ultrasound if they were a smoker. Um, because we know smoking is such a big risk factor for a AAA. So we, now we know kind of what to do in terms of identifying it. So, you know, let's talk about management. And that's kind of where we'll end it at. So what do you think is going to be our plan for management? What would you do if you were this patient's doctor? So some of you guys may be saying, you know, take them to the operating room and doing surgery. Others may have other plans like some just medicine. And honestly, they're both right. Um, and it really depends on a special number. And that number for a AAA is 5.5 centimeters. So essentially, your aneurysm, this thing right here, this big baby right there, if it's bigger than 5.5 centimeters, you go to surgery because your risk of a rupture on a yearly basis is 11%. Okay, so that's obviously big enough. And then if you're, you're smaller than that, then we do what we call conservative management. So that includes controlling your blood pressure, stopping you from smoking, um, and, you know, causing more issues, um, and just lifestyle choices, weight loss, um, giving them uh, a statin to lower their cholesterol. But that's basically what we do, and we keep evaluating it, okay? So... That is a big overview on what a AAA is, how to evaluate somebody with abdominal pain, and the worst case scenario, which is a ruptured AAA, that we want to make sure we avoid and our patients are at least are ready to take care of. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Apologies for all of the um, kind of <laughs> mishaps and uh, marks and spellings and issues. But um, if this was helpful, let me know because I am more than willing to keep doing this on a weekly basis if you guys find it um, to be advantageous. So uh, check out the resources below this video for kind of more uh, explanations, pictures, and whatnot. Uh, and obviously, please give me feedback. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, guys.